Ready to go? All right. Um, welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the uh, Sewer Authority Mid Coast Side Board of Directors on Monday, November 17th at 7.04 p.m. Uh, roll call, please. Director Kowalczyk? Here. Director Alifano? Here. Chair Harvey? Here. Director Boyd? Here. Director Warren? Present. Director Lohman. Here. All right, to stand and have a pleasure of meeting us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oops. You changed the flag. You changed the flag. Who put the flag? Who put the flag? Do we have anybody here who knows the flag? Do it again. Do it again. Oh. Oops. Oops. Right, it still well, counts, right? Okay, it still counts. <laughs> so let's go ahead with uh, any public comment. Uh, anyone, anyone have public comment? Any um, oral communication or public comment or comment from the board? If not, we'll go ahead with um, with item uh, special order of the day. Receive and file SAM 2013-14 audited financial statements. Um, we have a review um, by, by Jennifer Derman and um, C.G. Ullenberg. So do we do, do we want uh, Rob or? Okay. Thank you. I'm, my name is Jennifer Derman. I'm a direct audit director at C.G. Ullenberg I'm in charge of this audit. I have a couple of required communications that I need to make with those in governance, so I'll go through those rather quickly. And if you have any questions, I'll open that up at the end. Um, our responsibilities were to express an opinion on whether the financial statements were fairly stated in all material respects in conformity with accounting principles generally accepted in the U.S. We do look at internal controls for the purpose of planning, but we do not provide any assurances on them. We were able to complete our audit as planned. I confirm to you that our firm has complied with all ethic requirements regarding independence. There are certain uh, aspects of the uh, accounting practices that we do mention to the, those in governance. There were no significant accounting policy changes. There were no unusual transactions. Uh, and as in prior years, the significant accounting estimates are the useful lives of all capital assets and pension-related benefits. Those have enough estimates within them that they could change in the future. Uh, journal entries, uh, we had no uh, journal entries proposed. Um, there were a few uh, items that were not material to the financial statements under $6,000 that they were agreed to and discussed with management. Oh, we have no disagreements with management and they provided our requested representation letter. We are not aware that management consulted any other accountants. Uh, and just as a side note, uh, we had great cooperation again, once again, with Kevin and Jeanette and her staff. Everything we got done very quickly. All documents were presented as we requested them. I did want to make the board aware, I'm sure you are all aware from your other agencies, uh, that for the next fiscal year, June 30th, ending June 30th, 2015, the authority will re be required to disclose pension obligations in according with new accounting <coughs> rules. So that's going to result in a large liability to appear on the financial statements of the, thor of the authority at the next fiscal year. Unfortunately, PERS has not made that information available to my knowledge. I think it's going to be between a million and two million dollars for the authority that will have to hang up on the balance sheet. But that's just my observation based on what I've seen from previous years. I'm sure that's probably in line with what you have been expecting, but I just wanted to give you the heads up. Um, it's not part of our current year audit, but I think it's good to mention it because it is a significant change. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Is that a, um, an unfunded liability? Because I don't, I, I'm not visualizing any money we have set aside for that. It's an amount that you have to show as a liability is the difference between your calculated um, liability by the actuary and how much plan assets are available to cover those liabilities at a point in time. And up until this point, based on previous reports, the authority has generally been about 80% funded for the difference between those two. That has never been required to be shown on the financial statements. It will now be required to be shown on the financial statements. The difference between how much you owe 
and how much li um, assets are available to pay off what you owe at a point in time. So maybe this question should actually be directed to our staff. Um, if, if, if we were to look at our reserves, do we have it's a, point in time. a specific it's amount set aside for that? Um, Not at this time, no. So, um, so I, we should discuss this as a separate item. By the way, it, the, 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 you know, it's a point in time we're talking That's about. That's right. We're not, we're not going to fund the whole, uh, you know, the And this, is a, this has been an ongoing, yeah. it's, it's, it's you have common. this liability for many, yeah. many years. Okay. We're just being required by accounting standards to show it on the right. financial So, <laughs> if there's any further discussion, if anyone, if anyone wants further discussion, we'll have it on a separate agenda item. Go, go ahead, please. And were there so, any other questions? Oh, okay. Any other questions? Regarding the audit or? Well, you had mentioned there were some minor issues. Well, I wouldn't say issues. What happens is there are differences in estimates that come up. Like, for example, um, when, when you calculate the uh, other pension benefit the, related to health care, there was a slight, very, I mean, like, very small, slight calculation difference between how it should have been done and how <clears> we did it. Um, and I say we as a team, because we all looked at it the first time and thought it was right, and then we looked at it a second time and realized we had made a $6,000 error in our calculation. But that number is already an estimate. So it seemed like a very minor thing. It's almost like, you know, you have this big estimate, and then you're just shifting the estimate again a little bit. So it didn't seem like it was <coughs> worth going back and reopening the books. But overall, nothing out of the ordinary. No. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, other, any other questions? So do we need to we have a motion to approve to uh, accept? Okay. So moved. And it's a second. Second. Um, do we need a roll call for this so we can have a okay voice? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, so it passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, going let's go on to um, the special order of the day, the second special order of the day. And that's a, um, a plaque commemorating Tony Poland. Thirty-one years, eight months. <laughs> if we don't, if we don't give him the plaque, will he stay? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a good idea. Sooner. That's a good idea. <laughs> Should explore that possibility. All right, Rob. Thank you. I, I'm sure, as you're all aware, um, as of officially, as of December 26th, that will be uh, Tony will be officially retiring from the sewer authority and. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I just wanted to put that kind of length of dedicated service into some kind of perspective. The amount of time that Tony spent here is roughly 380 months. That is a, an entire career that somebody has uh, put their heart and soul into and has acted with a great deal of professionalism and drive and dedication to this place. And um, I regret that I will have only had a chance to work with him for seven or eight months instead of a career because he obviously cares very deeply about this place. And a lot of the policies and procedures and things that he's done reflect very positively <coughs> on him and on this organization. And with that, I just wanted to uh, officially say thank you very much from Sam and from the uh, stakeholders and from, I guess, the overall coastside environment for your dedicated service to protecting this area. He's very much appreciated. So, when you want to come up and end up with the camera, I think we need to be a digestive. Digestive. like the official handshake. Oh, somebody's got to record it. I think it's just suggest that. Now, Rob, what is that? What is that? Uh, career length in minutes? Uh, I worked out in minutes, but it was over 8,000 working days. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Oh, wait, Tony. We were thinking about it'd be nice to have something to remember you by after you're, you're not here. And would it be okay if we didn't like maybe the digester after you? <laughs> I don't know. Nicely outfitted aeration tank number four. Yeah. <laughs> you the aeration tank number four. Put your name in a plaque. Put your name in a plaque.
What failed? Oh, the Tony failed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you oh, we have the service. we have the fallen yeah. things. Do we have any pull-in things? Oh, oh, Tony, thank you very much. You guys are you've, you've great, and uh, you know, this place reflects your, your your abilities. The whole whole operation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm talking just what's happening with you now after you leave here in December. So my leather still fit, my wetsuit still fits, and uh, <laughs> I'm tired and chain on my mountain bike, so I'm ready to go. Excellent. Okay. When I get bored of that, we'll see what happens then. You still gonna live on the coast? Yes. Okay. That's right. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. So. Okay. Good. Yeah. I've been here almost almost all my life, so I don't know what I do anywhere else. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Tony. You, Tony. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about the snapshot day. All right, moving on to uh, moving on to uh, uh, item number three, consent agenda. Um, there are three three uh, major categories: a, approved minutes of October 27, 2014 board meeting; b, receive and file managers' monthly reports for October 2014, including a monthly flow report; b, financial statement; c, monthly MPDES report; d collection system data, and then the third category is C, approved disbursements for November 2014. Board members? I would make a motion <coughs> to approve the consent calendar. But I'd like to pull uh, B, A, the monthly flow report. All right. Anybody else? Uh, I just um, want to throw in one easy request. On the, um, on the graph, um, the, the combined graph, could we sort of force the scale on rain so that when there's the tiniest bit of rain, it doesn't have a peak all the way up here when it's only like half an inch or something. <laughs> yep. That's how important a half an inch is to us. Before we guys, we got a half an inch. Uh, any, okay. Uh, the, uh, um, so B, is there a second? A, is, is, second. is there any other items to be pulled? Okay. I'll second. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and. Uh, um, let's go ahead and discuss uh, B B A then. Okay. Go ahead. Rob, can you hand out those other students? Scott's second. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the ones? Okay. Let's yeah. go ahead and vote on the ones that, that uh, were not pulled. All the other ones. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item B A. Oh, just did Tony have those out for you? Oh, yeah. Rob. Talking about this. Uh, Rob, I'm sorry. They're coming around. Oh, okay. So basically, um, you know, we've noticed uh, that the half of my numbers have gone, gone up in the last few months. And I've just been, I, I like to put things in, in terms of, you know, past reference. So Tony, uh, uh, Tony, uh, Rob got me um, five years worth of uh, flow numbers. And I took just the half of May numbers and I showed them for the five years. I did a five-year average, as you can see on top. And it came down to about, and I estimated the last two months. Came out to about 48 percent, so you can kind of see there's, you know, we're pretty close to 48. We we peaked out at maybe 50, but that that's a pretty close range. But when I wanted to compare, I thought, well, I think only the last two years probably are relevant in terms of probably accurate measurements. So on the bottom one, I took 2012 and 13 and averaged them. The year averages out to about 50 percent, 49.66. And as you see, as we're going through 2014, we're, we're, we're coming out very close, 49.43. But, you know, you can see occasionally some months pop up, and that's why September seemed, or actually August seemed a little higher. Um, the same with September and October. But if you look at the overall 12 months, they seem within range. So my only comment, I think it's worthwhile this is what I would like to see okay. in future reports, just adding in the new month. Sure. And I think it's up to staff really to say, gee, if you see something that really starts to pop out, mm -hmm. gee, is one of the meters going haywire or something happening, rather than wait six months or a year and then you see something and it's definitely off. Absolutely. Okay. But I have to say, I mean, after looking at comparing the last couple of years, it, it appears like 12 months, there's nothing really <coughs> radically strange happening. At least that's the way I see it. Okay. 
Anybody else? Um, I think this would lend itself nicely to some overlaid line graphs, which I've asked for for quite yeah. a while. Well, we can we can not, we can do that. We've got the database built. So. Yeah, you know, ba basically the the graph that you provide every month. If you could do something very similar to that, but have um, where each data point would essentially be a whole month, mm -hmm. and so we can see 12 months at a glance, and then you have multiple lines for different years. Sure. We do that. What I might suggest is we do it for each agency, mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll end up with a, a really cluttered yeah. graph. But we can yeah. we can make something like that happen. So we'll, we'll do some more. Uh, Although with the 20, 30, 50, it would actually have enough spread. I don't know. I, that's true. I I'm not, I don't have any problem. If you want to do more graphs, that's great. I, I think that'd be mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, we've got something like this for our, our water year graph uh, from Ontario, and you can see it's just great to see them overlaid because, like right now, how how are we doing compared to the past few years? You look at the graph, you already know. That's got if all if all three agencies are on a single sheet. You know, you said the spread will keep them from overlapping. It'll be easier to see at a glance whether they're changing mm -hmm. in lockstep or opposite mm -hmm. lockstep. Yeah. It makes it a little more intuitive to see whether there's the precipitation effects all three yeah. agencies, things like that. Sure. Well, well, and, uh, then, uh, with your uh, uh, agreement, I'll keep producing just, uh, as the months go by, I'll produce different types of graphs and bounce them off you as, as far as what the preferred uh, output would be. Sounds good. Okay, good. I'd like to just throw out my monthly comment that where I mean, what we're seeing is fluctuations in another direction now. When we saw them in a different direction earlier, um, if the fluctuations are normal but annoying, uh, in the future next year we could, if we're working on the GPA, we could maybe consider the fixed ratios just to eliminate this problem. It would be, you know, because you know, like you know, two years ago we spent a lot of money. Now half the base spending money. And it's like it's bouncing all over the place. You yeah, it wasn't as important it, before, but no, it's really important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but Ellen's um, uh, chart here seems to uh, show something pretty clearly, which is it's very seasonal. It looks to me like it's increasing too over time. Gradually, there's this slight it, increase. Now, the, last time we went through this whole thing, uh, one of the things that it really helped us get to resolution was to go and look at how we were measuring and we ultimately found a problem in one of the monitoring stations uh, the big one as it turns out and it was actually up. telemetry <coughs> the, it, the, the, the signal is okay over there by the time it got to here it was no good i understand i would characterize that as a problem with the monitoring um, <coughs> That we were doing it as analog is, is problem number one, and problem number two was it took us a while to go take a look at the specifics and convince ourselves that it, we were getting good reads. Um, at what point do we use the information that things are diverging from a norm and uh, take the opportunity to go check our instrumentation? Uh, Rob, that would be a question probably for you, and I don't know that there's a good clean answer right now, but we may be seeing an early warning sign of some of our sensing drifting sure. um, for whatever reason, and there's got to be some threshold at which uh, we're clear we should go take another look. I don't know that we're at that. I mean, I think Alan's, you know, the tag of their format makes it look like, well, you know, some years it's up, some years it's down. This could be well within the range of normal, but like with the Renata situation, uh, Leonard started sounding the alarm fairly early on, mm -hmm. and uh, we went through uh, kind of a discovery of well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be you know, it could be uh, salt water getting in at some of the low points, leaking into the mm -hmm. the gravity sections of the IPS, or it could be you know, it could be a number of things. Mm -hmm. We we went through a bunch of discovery. Now we've got some indication from the past about some of the things we did learn. And I think it'd be good if, if you establish some criteria for, okay, when do we go check this stuff again? And maybe it's just regular maintenance schedule, or maybe it's time to go, you know, run some more manual, you know, bucket tests or whatever it is that we want to do. I would just say before we get into that situation, it might be a good time to. 
and decide and, what the criteria and, are. And typically, at least in the most recent past experience, the staff does look for anomalies in the, in the data when you start seeing these uh, patterns that don't, don't seem to agree with what our typical, say, dry weather flows over the last couple of months would be if we start seeing something that deviates from the norm that, that triggers a, you know, a deeper insight. But as, as I get more familiar with the system, I'll start seeing more of those things too, I'm sure. You know, it might be a good idea to actually schedule a bucket test for either once a year or twice a year. You know, what Tony did that I came and observed that time, where um, he determined that the telemetry was off by like 20 something percent. Yeah. Hey, I, I think the good um, news is sure. that, that, that no one has actually noticed the hose that we're running from. All from El Granada all the way into Half Moon Bay. So we we carefully cleverly buried that and no one's picked it up yet. Old moon. Is, it, is, is there it, a secret pump uh, secret pump station? Is it we found it with our secret <laughs> meters. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. So um the other is no other comment? Do we have a motion? I'd make a motion we accept the uh, monthly flows. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. All right, let's go on to old business. Receive update from Ad Hoc Recycled Water Committee. Have we had a meeting? Have we had a meeting since then? Since the last uh, Sam meeting? I think with the politics and all the election. No. Just didn't it? No. So I, th I think right now, there was a <coughs> every, everybody did Montero. Uh, we, we, got the, <coughs> we got the, uh, the draft like the, pretty late for the meeting, so none of the board members had had it, besides us, had had a chance to read it. So. We're going to take it up at our next meeting. So we're going to take it up at our next meeting. And okay. We'll hopefully. It's on our agenda this week. It'll be. So, so and it's on our agenda. agenda the city council. We don't have it on the agenda for tomorrow, so we'll make sure we get it on the 1st of December agenda. Okay. So I would say by January, uh, everybody, I, I would assume, would have uh, approved it. Okay. And then I, <clears> my assumption would be you'll, you'll get CCWD's comments at that point, okay. and then you can work with CCWD to come up with something that you can both agree to. Or phase one for a, yeah. a contract of some yeah. type. All right. Any, yeah. any other comments about recycled water? Um, if not, we'll go on to uh, old business uh, item B. <coughs> Discussion and possible action, SAM member agency flow data 2009 to 2014. That was just that was, that was, that was, uh, what I was looking for was direction on it from the uh, from the board, and I believe I've gotten it as far as if uh, can, um, um, having staff continue down this road of trying to sift through three to five years worth of data to provide some kind of long term insight for you was worthwhile, and if it is, then I will continue to do so. So okay, That's a, thank you, Rob. Okay, new business um, uh, a adopt resolution. A resolution for paying and reporting the value of employer paid <coughs> member contributions. Well, what this uh, go, uh, goes back to is, is the, the second, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the July July first with the current uh, with the current MOU, the uh, employees have been uh, picking up one percent of the of Sam's. Uh, employer paid member contribution for retirement over 1% per year over the term of the MOU. And what this does is, uh, but we have to send PERS a resolution enacting that or uh, allowing uh, us to uh, change that uh, contribution from a 5-2 with 5% uh, being paid by SAM and 2% being paid by the employees to a 4% SAM contribution uh, and 3% employee contribution. And so, there were some delays with getting this enacted because there was some issues with um, uh, a, a portion of the uh, employer's normal costs going up by 0.765 that got conflated into this issue. And when we started discussing thing, uh, discussing the issue with PERS, uh, they were very clear about we had to deal with these uh, this 5.2 uh, to 4.3 issue separately from the 0.765 contribution. And the employees also need, uh, per the MOU, um, wish to wait to get the uh, numbers back from the uh, uh, operating, engin you know, operating engineers health and welfare fund because there was there's a stipulation in the MOU saying that they could have applied a portion of their salary to the benefits to 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 strictly to wages 
or to their retirement contribution. And when we started discussing this with PERS, they said that no, we're not allowed to split. If it goes into wages, it, it sort of de facto goes to PERS retirement contribution. But anyway, what it caused, it, it caused a lot of um, churn between us and PERS while we figured out what, what we can do within PERS statutes versus how the MOU is written. I mean, we've gotten all that done, but what that, rea what that resulted in was a, a few months delay in enacting this. So this is why this is coming to you in October instead of in July. So I just want to make that clear that there's been a couple of months delay, but it's been due to various factors. This is the first time where we've run across this issue of both these things coming coterminously. Um, my recommendation moving forward with the next MOU is that if there is a, a, a say, a 2 or 3% uh, portion that we wish the employees to pick up, that we deal with it in one fell swoop rather than the 1%, 1%, 1% every year because there's quite a bit of bureaucratic <laughs> process that yep. goes back. Now once we do Makes this, sense. it's got to go forward to PERS and then they have to actually cast a resolution on it also. And so in the interest of making it uh, uh, bureaucratically smooth for us and, and more efficient time-wise, that would be better in the future to do that. So. Okay. Scott? Scott? Oh, just a minute, Scott. Um, are back and forth with PERS. Has this mm -hmm. been mostly in writing? Yes. Um, <laughs> so we've memorialized the questions and their responses. Do we feel that they have offered more clear guidance? Yes. Crystal clear guidance? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll get to why I'm asking you. As, um, I think uh, we know. <laughs> uh, the, um, do we agree with their guidance? <laughs> It's Why don't you jump to the answers? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me assert for the record that uh, we have been through something fairly recently with PERS that uh, where they were they changed the regulations uh, and through what I believe to be a very sloppy process on their part, mostly well, sloppy process right around the time that it became very clear that PERS had incredible liabilities due to practices that they had encouraged and allowed to uh, blossom. They tried to push these things you know, retroactive mm -hmm. and uh, the, my one big takeaway was that they uh, were happy to use their weight to try to cover over their failure to communicate and promulgate properly. Mm -hmm. And so if that's what, if they are promulgating some new regulations on us, then I want to be sure that we are crystal clear and on the same page with them sure. from a date certain, nothing going back from that date, and that, that we know how to operate in a way where we're not going to get into it with them in the future, and if we do, we've got it thoroughly documented. That's uh, one thing I, I would want to compliment uh, uh, Administrative Supervisor, uh, Services Supervisor Tracy on. She's been very diligent with getting these things memorialized in writing and getting the clarification in great detail as to what what they what they mean and where if we've gotten an answer that's vague, we've gone up the chain of purse because mm -hmm. it's it's been uh, to be quite frank, it's been frustrating for me. I mean, negotiating, navigating through this mm -hmm. process is is. Uh, been, been less than linear, I guess I'd say, but we've, we've been very diligent in documenting everything. So I have, I have good confidence that that's accurate. Well, I know that Jeanette understands the issues quite well, and I'm very glad to hear that yeah. we're making something of the learning experience. Okay, Mr. Warren. Um, I don't understand something. The cover memo here, which I believe is correct, says contributions of 4% will become effective with the upcoming payday of November 28th. But the resolution says 5%. Oh. We'll, we'll correct that if that's an error. So which is correct? It will be 4 and 3. Okay. Um, uh, it should be 4. Yes, it should it should say four. And then in the resolution it should say 4. Well, it, it's spelled out in words and then the number in parentheses. Mm -hmm. so, both wrong. so in the motion, we could correct it? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, sure. Okay. Is there anything that we should record into our motion for the minutes? Do you feel like you need any additional mm -hmm. clarification from the board about what it is that we're doing? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Any other cases we have a motion? Move we adopt resolution next in order. Uh, resolution for paying and reporting the value of employer paid contributions with the correction and the second bullet item changing the word five to the word four and the number five percent to four percent. Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It passes unanimously. All right, um, we've already taken care of new business B. <laughs> so uh, we're all set. Um, yes. That was. Uh, did, did we, she, no, this is for the. This is for the resolution. Well, no, we need to. She probably passed the resolution. I don't know. Yeah, the, the well, other one said nice things at my. The plaque won't be official. That's right. All right. Okay. So do we do we have a motion? I, I move we adopt the. Uh, Resolution next in order recognizing Anthony Pullen, technical services supervisor, upon his retirement for 31 years, eight months of dedicated service to the sewer authority made site. Second. Uh, I'll second it. I, I, I'd request that one of us read it. It's pretty short. Um, you're, you're nominated. I nominate Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I mean, who works? In a place like this for 31 years. I mean, this is this is some pretty pretty serious dedication. And we all know that, and uh, for those of us here, we know that to a certainty. But to the hopefully to some audience out there, uh, in case you never met Tony, if you've never really uh, seen his work, this is this is a good short summary. The resolution recognizing Anthony Pullen, technical services supervisor, upon his retirement for 31 years, eight months of dedicated service to the Sewer Authority of Coastside. Whereas by the Board of Directors of the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside, San Mateo County, California, as follows. Whereas Sam is desirous of recognizing long term employees, and whereas Anthony Pullen has worked for the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside since April 16, 1983. And whereas Anthony Pullen was promoted to Technical Services Supervisor at the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside in July 1999. And whereas Anthony Pullen has displayed through the performance of his duties the highest standards of personal ethics, professional competency, and dedication. And whereas Anthony Pullen shall retire on December 26, 2014, after serving the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside and its customers for 31 years and eight months, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside formally extends all due respect, admiration, and appreciation on behalf of the Sewer Authority Mid Coastside, the Joint Powers Authority member agencies, and the customers therein to Anthony Pullen for his many years of dedicated service. I'd like to add the thanks of uh, my wife's biology class <laughs> and all of the programs they've run for the biology groups out here. It's been a real huge program at the high school and the kids love it. It's just yeah. one of their favorite things um, to do real science and come out here and learn real science. It's worked out real well. Could we do a press release uh, for the local paper? Sure. Yeah. Get, I think Scott's got a nice yeah. picture. Yeah. That'd be real nice. I'd like to include nice something attitude. about the high school program too, and that just yeah. because it's. I like to have the on the photo if you label it. Scott took the photo. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if I did the arithmetic correctly, uh, based on how it turned out, we'll go with common. You know, the uh, creative comments on this. No, I could if, if I did the arithmetic correctly, uh, I'm assuming. Uh, 40 hour work weeks, that's nearly 4 million minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking 3 million, but okay. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go with 4. Gosh. Wow. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much. All right, we'll go on, on to item number 6 general manager's report. Rob? Um, I just, uh, at the board's uh, pleasure, do you have any questions on, my, uh, on the details of my report? I'd be happy to answer any uh, that you might have. Uh, one thing we did know is we did do some uh, cleaning and inspection of the IPS between Frenchman's Creek and Rocket Farms. We did get about two yards of debris out of it. Wow. Um, it looked like quite a bit of sand, but there was also some uh, material in there that looked like it might be construction debris, uh, some bits of ductile iron pipe and things like that. And so we're still chasing that down to make sure that it's not ours. And it could, it, if 
if there had been repairs or anything in the past, there could, some of that debris could have gotten kicked in there. What we've done is we've cleaned up the line and we'll monitor it and see if anything may have continues to be deposed. So we're still looking up like Rocket Farms lateral hmm. and chasing it back to see if we can find anything. Is this the gravity portion? This is the gravity portion. You didn't mess with our special hose to no. <laughs> bypass that, did you? We left that. They reversed it. <clears throat> <laughs> do we, do we have uh, pipes flow both ways? Right? <laughs> I, I guess I'm unclear on the status of our bypass stations. Do we have the bypass stations installed at that area yet? They're in, I believe. So were they used for this? No. no. We just we can we can do a, a flow holds at various stations to give us enough time to get in there and clean these things out. It's just a matter of timing it around our peaks. It gives us a couple of hours to get in, clean it, and inspect it. So. Rather than you know pull pull everything out to utilize the bypass station is pretty Find any jewelry or uh, <laughs> sheriff's badges or oh, we, we said this there. is old history. I'm looking for oh. the jewelry stories. That's well, how we fund some of our programs. The, the best one was the sheriff's badge that Pat found. Didn't find the sheriff. Didn't find the sheriff. Okay, <laughs> once once a dream machines. Um, I can't remember her name, uh, our long past uh, uh, lab manager, uh, Brenda. Um, Brenda had this jar of pennies on display at Dream Machines once and was uh, having people rummage through. I said, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one, one other thing I wanted to uh, highlight is the um, First Flush program, which the, the district has agreed to increase the funding a, a couple of months previous. Um, they did go out and do their water quality sampling here last last month. And uh, they've offered and uh, accepted to uh, come in to give us a presentation on their findings and uh, an overview of the program for us at our January board meeting. So the, the water samples have been collected and they're being uh, analyzed right now. So we we'll get those results. Uh, uh, yeah, RCD will be in to give a presentation on the on the, the program and their findings. So Great. Look forward to that next month Good. or in January. Excuse me. All right. Anything, anything else? Right. <coughs> Thank you very much. All right. Attorney's report. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, no report. I would like to comment though, just for the record, and that is. To compliment staff on this uh, audit that we had earlier, I didn't realize they were leaving so quickly after their presentation. But I, I wanted to comment for their benefit as well, and that is in the back. I always look at the back of the auditor's letter, which is, starts on page 29, where they observe that there have been no material weaknesses, and that there have been uh, the financial reporting is is, is uh, acceptable. And that when they go on checklist, a checklist, they can comply with the auditing standards. And so I think it's easy to sort of not be aware of good work that's done to get this. And I think it needs to be recognized. And I just want to do so. so thank you, Jim. Sure. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. All right. Any other comments? <coughs> okay. Uh, board of directors reports. Anybody? Um, I have something. It, it's a little tricky, uh, <coughs> but I'm not sure how to go about this here. I probably should have conferred with council before the meeting. No, you didn't want to hold on. Um, that sounds like one, a good no, idea. I, 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 I think, well, <laughs> that opening line. Line. I, but, but the, the problem is there, there may be some significant time sensitivity to it. Um, I discussed something from our previous meeting with um, GCSD's general counsel, I mean with the general manager, and he went to general counsel. And I was wrong about the authority of the board uh, regarding um, unrepresented employees. Um, and uh, so I think we need to revisit um, something that was done at that board meeting. So I got an idea. Why don't you talk to our council afterwards and then talk to Rob about sketching? I think I need to talk to both of them at the same time. Sounds great. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and do that? All right. Hey, any, <coughs> anything else? Uh, but there's no closed session. Uh, at this, 
Um, so we are at 7.43. Before you stretch it out. I just, stretch it out. I'm yeah. not sure if this is Alan's last meeting officially because we're not going to do December. I'd like to thank oh, Alan goodness. for well, I'm gonna, what all I'll of do his is, work here also. Um, we don't have December, so I'll come back in January just to... He'll, he'll be coming back. Yeah, I'll come back just to yeah. see. This time to the introduce the new person. Of of we're, 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 not, we're not through with you yet. Yeah, though. yeah. And I, I got to be honest with you guys. I mean, I, I didn't enjoy being here at first, but I have to tell you, it, it got a lot better as time went along. I think <laughs> once we got over some of the bumps on the road and understood where we were all coming from, because you know, my whole goal has always been do what's best for Sam, what's best for the ratepayers, and and seeing this agency really get on its feet in in a in a really strong way. And I'll be honest, I I was very upset with what I saw when I came in the door with our, our, our past GM. I didn't think we were going in the right direction. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to make that kind of a change, but I think it's working out very well. I'm very happy that we we went through that that difficult time. Um, so I, f I feel very confident that the, the time and effort myself, Rick, you all have put in here, I think has paid off. And I think we've gotten a really good working relationship. I, I like where everybody's coming from, and I think Jim's done a, an excellent job running things here. Because we're here not to argue about things, we're here to do Sam business. And that's what's been happening lately. The, the only thing I, do, I am concerned with is I want to see recycled water continue. I think it's really an important thing. And if we can make phase one happen, then everything else can, can come after that. That's the big hurdle we got to get through. So whoever is the new one sitting here, I want to follow up with that person and Rick and, and just kind of make sure that we stay on track with recycled water. Well, the recycled water committees are, uh, committee meetings are theoretically public meetings. Well, Ellen, Ellen, <laughs> Ellen, thank you for that. You know, I, I'm, really, uh, I, I'm really sad to see you... Uh, Leave. I think you made a huge contribution. We're going to miss you, and uh, and we really hope that you um, that you stay involved and that we uh, we see you again at some point in the future. We really uh, you, you made a huge contribution to the board, and it's been a pleasure working with you. No, it's, been a, it's, it's been a pleasure working, not in the beginning, but <laughs> <laughs> later on. We I, knew we knew sooner or later. <laughs> sooner or later, is what all you became and become the sewer nerd that the rest of us are. <laughs> So thanks for coming around. Uh, well, he, I think and learning to I appreciate. Think it's a, I, don't know I, I think his point is, is who's who's caved, but uh, <laughs> no, we caved or he caved. I think it's you know, anyway. In any case, yeah. I, it was I, a I, mutual I, cave. It was a mutual cave. Mutual cave. I want to yeah. give Alan some credit. I, I, He's actually the one who turned me around on uh, sewage on the beach. Um, so now, I'm, uh, <laughs> now you love our beaches. Uh, uh, now that's I love our beaches. So I really love our beaches. So it's, uh, uh, for those, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a little uh, Inside uh, internal joke. joke. Uh, uh, of course, we all know that Rick is, uh, he, he loves, uh, of always, course, he always does. loved the beaches. Of course. He's always loved the beaches. He's never <laughs> stopped loving the I, I would I would like to um, basically underscore what Alan was saying in, in, in different terms. That it, it really seems to me that, that the, the, the board itself has been a lot smoother in like the last. I don't know, probably three years than in the decade before that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think you 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 looked at that, both of you guys have done a uh, made a big, big contribution to the board, and it's been a pleasure working with both of you. Yeah, uh, and I think we we appreciate the effort you all have put in to try and make things smoother and, and move Sam in the right direction. And I I got to tell you that besides recycle water. You know, the JPA needs to be updated, and then that capital plan needs to be laid out. Because once that's done and all that's in place, then you can figure out the financing. And that, that to me, for the longevity of SAM is critical for all the people that are going to come after all of us to know that, that that groundwork's in place. So when a pipe reaches the end of its lifespan, the money's sitting there ready to replace that pipe. Yeah, I've been saying that for a lot longer than you've been so, on this board. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, we, uh, so we're, we're going to count on you to, to talk to the person coming in. I will work with them. Uh, work for that person. And, keep things and if you don't mind, I'd love to come to your to the Christmas party. Oh, no, I'm, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. Well, I, still, I think you're still, still, still in the board. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, the public is sitting here imagining what a sewer 
sewer, sewer resort, resort and Christmas party must be alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we still have See, some of those cookies. Proof that positive. That yeah. you know, weather project. We turned Alan into a sewer nerd like us. <laughs> the cookies, I think, are gone. The official <laughs> Sam cookies are gone. I wish I, I, wish I would have kept one. We should have kept one. I still wish I kept one. I have a picture. Kept. We have pictures. Oh, I got pictures. Uh, I tell you where to order more. Maybe we can reproduce them. I'm sure we could. <laughs> but yeah, I think, Tim, you were, that, was a, that was a big, big day. That was a, a, a wet day. I remember Tim giving us that demonstration of the, uh, of the, uh, the bucket demonstration. That was good. Yeah, but some of us up on the dais couldn't really see it. So I, have a, I, I actually I need to make an important point, a serious point. Four years ago, who the hell would have thought we would have sat here Reminiscing and, <laughs> and laughing and enjoying our time at Sam. It's really come it's a long the cookies. way. It's, it's the cookies. It's, 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 it's in the cookies. Well, no, it's it's a it's a it's, it's, a, you it's, seen a, it's a comment on, on all of us working together and, and, and to make it a better relationship. So now I'm gonna stop you know, throwing compliments to everybody. All right. So if there if there no more, if there's everyone no more was problems. worried that Jim was gonna actually set a record for you know shortness of you're uh, stalled it out on that. Well, what, what, what's the Okay, uh, in that case, if there's no other comments, the meeting is adjourned at uh, 7.45. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well played, sir. Yeah. <laughs>